buses to run every 15 minutes. We need investments to go into flexible buses and certainly not into streetcars that are designed to serve a tourist population. In the post-Katrina context, we really have been, I think, struggling a bit, but really fighting hard to get back to a place where we have not only the right amount of transportation, but high quality transportation, especially uh, through a lens of equity. Ride New Orleans was founded in 2009 by a number of folks who were really interested in making sure that the recovery from the storm worked well and that the people of New Orleans were actually benefiting. And, and what they started realizing as they were looking around is that the transit system, which had been a really key component and was very reliable before the storm, just really had not been keeping pace with the recovery. What was abundantly clear to us is that the comfort of the average New Orleanian in riding the transit system had not been a priority for the city for a very long time. Your average New Orleanian who has a car or access to a personal car, they can reach 86% of the region's jobs in 30 minutes or less. But if that same New Orleanian is relying on transit, they can only reach 11% of the region's jobs. Hospitality is a big part of our of our economy. And hospitality jobs definitely are not your normal eight to five jobs. You know, they're hotel workers, restaurant workers who work late hours. So we've tried to connect with employers about understanding how a good transit system benefits them by being able to get their workers to the core of the city. We uh, issued a report in 2014 that showed that only 29% of the bus service um, that existed before the storm had been recovered by uh, 2014, nine years later. Meanwhile, our streetcar service, primarily downtown serving tourists, 103% of that service had been restored. Even at a nine to five schedule, people find themselves watching three streetcars go by because they're too loaded with tourists to pick up people who are going downtown to serve them. The number one reason why folks are fired um, in the city of New Orleans is because they're late for work. We do not have good transit options. We're seeing that a lot of our folks are being segregated further and further away from the urban core and it's harder for them to get to work. We've got bus stops that have no benches, no shelters, some of them don't even have sidewalks or signs. We're actually at a bus stop, um, you may not notice it, uh, and oftentimes the drivers don't either because there's this tree in the background right in the line of sight of where people are waiting. And if you notice here, there's a pole with no sign. Um, and so people actually have no idea what buses are coming this way unless you actually really know the system. When we think about people who ride public transit, it's the little things like that. Do they have shelter to stay dry on a cold and rainy day? And we really want to get some signatures today and say, hey, do you feel like RTA should focus on this? I've been living in the Senior Citizen Building for eight years. So I've been waiting eight years. I say, of course, we'll do a petition. we we'll ride to get a bus stop uh, shelter in front of my building. It's important to have bus shelters in New Orleans because it's a hot climate, it's a humid climate. God, it rains 120 days a year in New Orleans, so we need the shelters. So we have a central transfer point in New Orleans where about two-thirds of our buses come by. We don't have a transfer hub. What we have is about a four-block area where we have 8,000 people that transfer. And at the time, we had less than 50 chairs. One day, we rented hundreds of plastic folding chairs and set them up. And put signs on them reserved for transit riders. We held a press conference across the street from there. And we were able to get benches installed there. Uh, fairly shortly thereafter. We needed a way to activate the riders and, and get the riders to think that they could actually see change happen within the system. And from that, we've created the Coalition for Quality Transit. We see a lot more synergies that Rydola and others are helping us create with regard to public participation and decision making with the Transit Authority. We've seen the advent of the Riders Advisory Committee giving a space for riders to actually have formalized input. Yeah, I was out riding the bus one day and I just was waiting there and Stephanie came up to talk with me and she was asking me if I was interested in coming to a meeting. I said, it was about buses, of course. So I've been going to the meeting ever since. This last year, New Orleans had a mayoral election. So it came with this idea of 
doing bus rides with all the candidates, inviting them, um, asking them questions, recording it. Um, we recorded it on an iPhone and then posting it to our website. So it was very low tech. We invited each mayoral candidate and we had 14 of 18 candidates. So this candidate took a ride with us. The bus was six minutes late. It was standing room only. And then the bus got stuck in traffic and ended up being 30 minutes late to get to its downtown stop. We felt like we had definitely done our job, displaying very starkly to her what the issues were. But 2018 is actually very exciting. We've been partnering with the RTA as they develop a long-term strategic transit plan. Uh, with regard to the transit master plan. We see that Vidola and others are helping us create uh, by way of the decisions that the city council and the office of the mayor make in coordination with the regional transit authority and others who have an impact on planning decisions in the city as it relates to transit. You can imagine by the time you've got all this together that the plan will be in effect and it's basically got a very specific uh, to-do list over the next five years, 10 years, and 20 years of what we need to do to move transit forward. So we've got some high capacity transit lines identified. And we're looking at on, on these areas, frequency coming every 10 minutes or less during peak and service up to 20, 24 hours a day. I think Ride New Orleans has done incredible work in creating ways for people to have a voice in such a process as there is um, and to create new processes and new means of oversight. And I'm grateful for Ride for doing all the things that they're doing and trying to get the word out that we need better transit and we need money to do that.